Okay, this is the uh, homework for uh, Gauss's law. I have a four centimeter square in the XY plane and it sits in a uniform electric field. I want to find the electric flux through the square. So I, if I imagine this is my Y and this is my X. This is the square. It's four centimeters on side. It's just a two dimensional square. So I have four centimeters here, four centimeters here. Um, there is a electric field. If I want to find the flux, that flux is just the surface integral of E dot dA. Um, dA here will be coming out of the page. So that's going to be the surface integral of my electric field 2i plus 3j plus 5k dotted with dA in the positive k direction. And so uh, the only Thing that is relevant here is the uh, the five because the i dot i dot k and j dot k those are both equal to zero. So I do the surface integral of five dA or five times the area, which is equal to five times uh, 0 0.0016 meters squared, which is point zero zero eight. Newton meter squared per coulomb. A cube with sides of length two meters is as in this figure. The E field around the cube is equals two I plus one Y J. What is the charge uh, contained within the cube? Okay, we did a very similar problem like this in class. Uh, but first, I just want to find the flux for all the different faces. I'm going to start with the front face. That's this face right here, and I want to find the flux. Uh, well, in this case, my dA is in the z direction or in the k direction. So my flux then will equal to the surface integral of E dot dA, which is the surface integral of uh, 2i plus 1yj, dotted with dA k. And because there's no k term in the electric field, this is going to equal to the surface integral of zero, which is equal to zero. All right, so uh, the front has no um, no flux, either going into or coming out of. In a similar way, for the flux for the front is zero. In a similar way, the back face of this cube also has a flux equal to zero because the area is in the negative k direction. It has neither i nor j components. So the flux of the, the front and the back are equal to zero. For the top face, the flux surface integral of E dot dA. For the top, the uh, area is in the j direction. So this is going to be the surface integral of 2i plus 1yj dotted with dA in the j direction. OK, so this becomes the surface integral. If I do that dot product, I get 1y dA, or just y dA. Now, at the top face up here, y is equal to 2 meters. So I'm going to put in here that y is equal to 2 meters times the integral of dA, which is going to be 2 times the area of that face, which is 4 meters, 4 meters squared. So that gives me my flux, 8 newton meters squared per coulomb. For the top face, that is the for the top face. Uh, and let's see. So we've done the top. We need to do the bottom as well. All right. It's going to follow along the same way, except for a couple small things. We have a negative here for the bottom. Pardon me. We have a negative there for the bottom for our dA. Uh, and also here for the bottom, y is going to equal to zero because at 
on that bottom face that's the value for y so as a result the flux at the bottom is also going to equal zero primarily because of this that y is equal to zero but also you have to recognize too it doesn't come into play here but just point out here that the area vector is in the negative j direction all right but so for the bottom face uh, y is equal to zero now let's look at the left face on the left face over here we have a da in the i direction actually in the negative i direction so my flux is equal to the integral of 2i plus yj dotted with negative da in the i direction. Uh, take the dot product of i dot i is equal to 1, j dot i is equal to 0. So that's going to be negative 2 da. There's negative 2 da negative 2 the integral of da is just the area which is 4 that's equal to negative 8 so that's the flux out of the left face now let's look at the flux out of the right face out of the right face the area is in that direction that's in the positive i direction so my flux is going to be the surface integral of my electric field 2i plus yj times uh, da in the i direction dot those two vectors uh, and then that's going to give me dotting these two 2 da the integral of 2 da which is just 2 times 4 where 4 is the area so that's equal to 8 now for another total flux I just add up all these I have 8 negative 8 uh, here I have 8 again And then I had 0, 0, and 0. I have six faces to the cube. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The flux through those faces, the total net flux is equal to 8 newton meter squared per coulomb. And then if I want to know the charge enclosed, Finding the flux is the hard part. Finding the charge enclosed is easy. It's just equal to epsilon naught, that permittivity of free space, times my total flux. It's 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times phi, which is uh, 8 flux. So that's 7.1 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. So measuring that flux around this cube gives us that our total charge enclosed inside that cube is 7.1 times 10 to the minus 11 coulombs. All right, a 6 nanocoulomb point charge is located at the center of a cube of side of length 2 meters. What is the electric flux through each of the faces of the cube? Okay, first of all, we just need to recognize that, you know, we have this, this charge, and it's putting out an electric field in all directions. And if I put a cube around this I'm just going to draw it in two dimensions here but if I put a cube because of the symmetry of the situation every face of the cube is going to encounter the same amount of flux and that flux is all going to be going out outwards because uh, I have this well, it's a positive point charge I didn't say that but it's it is a positive point charge okay so I just need to know what is the flux and then to find the flux through each face I just divide by six so if I find the total flux I just say phi from Gauss's law is Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. So that's going to be 6 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs divided by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. 678 newton meters squared per coulomb. So that is the total flux. And then if I want to know uh, the flux for an individual face of this cube, I just say one sixth of this. And that's equal to 110 newton meters squared per coulomb. In the air over a particular region at an altitude of 600 meters above the ground, the electric field is 120 newtons per coulomb directed downward. And then at 650 meters above the ground, the electric field is 100 newtons per coulomb direct it downward. What is the average volume charge density? Okay, so I imagine uh, I'm going to construct this uh, Gaussian surface. 
this is the bottom this is at 600 meters and then if I imagine the top there's the top this is at 650 meters within this there is this this cube that we have up in the atmosphere there is a certain amount of charge and I know this that there's a certain amount of charge because I have an electric field down here at the bottom my electric field is 120 newtons per coulomb All right, but up at the top I have an electric field going into this cube, this Gaussian surface, of 100 newtons per coulomb. All right, so I have a net, I have something inside of that, that cube within this, this atmosphere, that there is some charge there that is causing this difference in these electric fields. All right, so I want to, um, oh, and then also I'm assuming here that there's no electric field going to the sides. All right, so when I think about the total flux in and out of the box, I'm just considering the upper face and the downward face and the, the bottom face of the cube because there's no flux going sideways. The flux of the electric field is all going down. All right, so let's find the fluxes here. The flux out of the bottom face is going to be the electric field dotted with the area. Now, in this case, the electric field and the area are uh, are in the same direction because the area is in the negative k direction and the electric field is in the negative k direction. Right, so let me write that in vector notation. So my electric field is actually negative 120 newtons per coulomb in the k direction dotted with, uh, excuse me, not k, the j direction dotted with the area which is uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to call it the area. I should be a little more rigorous about this. And this area is in the negative J direction. All right, so when I do this, I'm going to get 120 newtons per coulomb times the integral of dA. Notice these negatives went away. So times the area, and I'm going to call this area length times width. So area equals length times width. I'll show you why in just a bit. All right, so I don't know those values. This is just an imaginary surface. I could give you some values. You could just make some up, but we'll just sort of leave it as L and W. Now let's do the flux for the top face. Now notice here that my area vector points up while my electric field vector points down. So this is going to be E dot dA. My electric field vector is 100 newtons per coulomb, so negative 100 newtons per coulomb in the J direction. Dotted with my area vector, which is dA in the J direction. So this is going to be negative 100 uh, times the area, which we're just calling length times width. And that is our flux. So our total flux equals 120 LW minus 100 LW, which is equal to 20 times the length and width of our Gaussian surface, which, as I said, we, we don't have particular values for that. We can make up some values, but we don't need to. All right, so now it's just asking for the density the charge density within this Gaussian surface, that's going to be the total charge Q divided by the volume. The total charge Q is going, we'll find from uh, Gauss's law, that's epsilon naught times V, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times phi, which is uh, 20 LW. So we can find this total charge in terms of L and W, 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10 LW. And so this is going to be 1.77 times 10 minus 10 length times width. And then our volume, 
of our cube is going to be length times width times height. However, our height is 50 meters, and then our length and width cancel out. Again, if you've put in numbers here, then if you ascribe some L and some W to your imaginary Gaussian surface, then that's fine, but it cancels out here. And then that, that gives us a charge density of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs per cubic meter. All right, so I found out the charge in this Gaussian surface by measuring the field above it and below it, and then calculating the flux, the total flux through the surface, finding from Gauss's law the enclosed charge right here, and then I did this thing where we found the density of the charge, charge per unit volume. I right, consider a charged cylindrical plastic rod. Okay, consider a charged cylindrical plastic rod has this linear density. Remember before we called this linear density, we call this a lambda. Uh, it's a, a charge per unit length. What is the electric field at a distance of two meters from the charge? Now we could go through this and we could derive our electric field like we did for some of the other regular shapes, you know, the uh, the uh, the disc and the and the the ring, but there's a much easier way to do this with Gauss's law. So this is really more of a derivation. So first of all, let's imagine this is our rod. It has charges on it with a certain density. I'm going to draw a Gaussian surface around it. Uh, my Gaussian surface is going to be a cylinder because the rod is sort of a cylinder too. So I draw this cylinder around it and I can start with uh, with Gauss's law, but first I'm going to define what is the flux through this cylinder. Now I know that there are uh, there are field lines coming off of this rod radially in all directions. I also know that we'll say that this rod is really long and that my Gaussian surface is much shorter than the than the rod is, so therefore I'm not going to have any field lines that are coming in the top or the bottom. So if I want to describe then what is my flux, it's going to be the surface integral of E dot A dot DA. Uh, the area vector DA is always going to be in the same direction as the electric field vector, so I can just say that this is E times A. And the area that I'm concerned about here is going to be the, the outer area of the curved surface of a cylinder, which is 2 pi r h. Notice I'm not including the areas of the faces, which would be pi r squared. I'm just including the area of the curved surface because there's no electric field coming in or going out of the ends of the cylinder. All right, so that's my flux for this object. And then I go with Gauss's law that Q enclosed equals epsilon naught times phi. Uh, and Q enclosed will equal to the linear charge density times the length of the rod, which is going to be h. So we're assuming here that the, the height of our cylinder is h. So this is going to be lambda times h on not and then we already have an expression for phi it's the electric field times 2 pi r h and now we see that our our height of our gaussian surface our cylinder becomes irrelevant it cancels out and the only thing that our electric field then depends upon is the distance from this charged rod and of course the linear charge density on the rod so my electric field then is equal to lambda it's my linear charge density over 2 pi r epsilon naught. All right, so uh, these values are given. 3 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs per meter, 2 pi, 2 meters, and 8.85. That gives us 27 newtons per coulomb. So a nice, easy way to find the electric field due to this regularly charged object. There are other ways to do this as well with uh, other shapes. Uh, 
this is just an example using cylindrical symmetry. 